friends, Happy New Year! I picked out my favorite top five videos from 2020. I hope you like these lessons too. Goodbye! Hey, our friends, today we're gonna draw a Lego person. We're gonna draw a basic Lego person so you can use your imagination and creativity to change this drawing into any Lego person you want. Yes. What do they need for this lesson? A marker, some paper, and some to color with. Yeah, let's start. Just. We're first gonna draw our Lego person's head. We're gonna draw a line down. Now I'm not drawing it in the center of a paper, I'm drawing a little over here to the left. So that this is going to be the side of our Lego person's head. Then we're going to draw an L, we're going to turn this into an L with a curve in the corner. So I'm going to draw another line that comes across like that. Now we're going to use our eyes to measure this distance. We want to measure and compare it so that the side of our Lego head is the same length as the bottom. This one, to me, looks a little shorter, so you could draw the bottom a little bit longer. Yeah. Then we're going to draw a curve that comes around on the corner, and then we're going to come straight up. I'm going to start up here and draw down. Yeah. Now let's draw the top. We're going to draw curves in the corner, just like we did down here. We'll draw a line across, and then another curve coming in and connecting. It should look kind of like a square with rounded corners. Good job. And it's okay that our squares look a little different. Yeah. We always say this because the most important thing is... To have fun. And to... Practice. Practice. Let's keep practicing. Yeah. Okay. Now let's draw our Lego person's eyes. I'm going to draw a circle and another circle. Two circles. This is where a lot of the details we could change on the on the face to make it look like a specific Lego person if we want. Let's also give him a smile or her a smile. And I'm gonna color in the eyes. Now let's give our Lego person a neck. We're gonna draw two short lines that come down right below the eyes. And then we're gonna draw the top of the Lego person's shirt. Then we're going to draw the side of the shirt and we're going to draw two diagonal lines. We're going to draw one that comes down over here on the left and also one that comes down over here on the right and see how they get further away towards the bottom. Yeah. Now let's draw the bottom of the shirt. We're going to draw a line that comes across and connects. <laughs> All right, now let's draw the legs or the pants. We're going to draw two lines that come down from each side of the shirt and they're parallel. See how they, they don't get closer together or further away at the bottom. These lines on the shirt aren't parallel, but these ones are. Now we're gonna draw a line right here at the very top of the pants. It's really close to the bottom of the shirt. Then we're gonna do the same horizontal line. Horizontal line goes this way, vertical line goes up and down. We're gonna draw leave a little more space, and then we're gonna draw another line that goes across, horizontal. This is for the hinge to make his or her legs walk. Now we're gonna draw two lines coming right down the middle. We're gonna go like this. We're gonna come down, and right next to it, we're gonna draw another one coming down. And this length is the same as the outside lines. So these could come down a little further so that they match the outside, yeah. Then we're gonna connect the bottom two, and we're gonna leave a little space here, and then connect the other two. It's starting to look like a Lego person. So much squares. Yeah, so many squares and straight lines. Now let's draw their feet. We're gonna leave a little space, come up and draw another horizontal line, but we're not gonna go across. We're gonna leave a little space here in the middle because this is their legs, they're separate. We're gonna draw another one at the same height. All right, we did it. We drew our- Lego le person. Yeah, the, well, the legs. Yes. Now we need to draw the arms. <laughs> so let's come up here. We're gonna draw the shoulder first. We're gonna start at the top, come out of the shoulder, and then we're gonna curve down. And look how I get further away towards the bottom of the sleeve. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here. Draw a curve that comes out for the shoulder and then down. Now let's connect the sleeves at the bottom of the shirt. What's our Lego person missing? His hands. Yeah, hands outside of the sleeves coming out. We're gonna draw a circle right here, but 
at the bottom, let's see, I'm gonna draw two points like that first because at the very bottom, we're gonna leave a space. And then we're gonna draw a circle, it comes around like that and connects the two dots together. Okay, now let's draw the outside of the hand. We're gonna draw two diagonal, little diagonal lines coming out at the bottom. Then we're gonna start at the end of those diagonal lines and curve around and connect to the sleeve. And let's do the same thing down here. And I'm just gonna connect it into his pants. Yeah, let's do the same thing over here on the right side. We're gonna draw two dots for the gap, two guide dots. Then we're gonna draw that circle, it comes around, connects the two dots together. Then we're gonna draw the two diagonal lines coming out of the circle. And then we're gonna draw and connect a curve from that diagonal line up to the sleeve. And then we, the other one could just go into his pants. We did it. Well, we need to add the top of yeah. his head <laughs> or her head. So I can add a hat. Yeah. <laughs> Let's draw two short lines coming out of the top. Yeah, and one more. And then we're gonna connect the top of those with a horizontal line. Now you could leave that off and actually add hair, but I think it looks cool this way. Yeah. We still need to do one more thing to our drawing. Color it. Yeah, this part we're gonna fast forward, but at the end you can pause the video to match the same color. You ready to fast forward? Yeah. Awesome, great job on coloring your Lego person. What colors did we use to color our drawings? Red. Yeah, what else are those colors called? Primary colors. Yeah, we use the basic colors, red, yellow, and blue. Now you guys can color your Lego people any way you want. You could also add extra details like hair and different clothes. You could turn this drawing into any person you want. Yeah. You could even make it look like yourself. We hope you have a lot of fun drawing your Lego person. And we'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. Here, friends, turn around and draw a Pokeball. Yeah, we're gonna draw a folding surprise. That means when you open it up, there's gonna be a Pokemon inside. And which one should we put inside? Pikachu. Yeah, we're gonna draw Pikachu, but you could really just draw any Pokemon you want. Now, for this lesson, you need something to draw with. We're gonna use markers. You also need some paper and and something to color with. Yeah, all right, you ready to start? Yeah. Right. Now we actually don't need to use the markers first. We're gonna fold our paper first. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're gonna take the top edge and we're gonna fold it down to the bottom edge. Line it up and then crease it right down the middle and then out to the corners. Good job, now let's take that top flap and we're gonna fold it back up to the top Line it up and then crease it down the middle, out to the corners. Oh, Whoa. that's okay. It's a little not lined, <laughs> not quite lined up, but that's okay, right? Yeah. We just realign it and then crease it down the middle first. Here, go down the middle and then out to the edge. Put both fingers, there you go, good job. Okay, now we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna repeat that same step. We're gonna take that top flap, line it up at the top and then down the middle and then out to the corners. Boop. Down the middle. There you go. Now we're gonna take that top flap and unfold it. Good job. And then we can flip it over. Now we're ready for our scratch paper. We're gonna put this underneath our drawing paper because we're using markers and we don't want our marker to bleed through the paper and get onto the table. Now we're ready to use our markers. We're gonna draw a circle for the Pokeball. And half of the circle is gonna be above this fold and the other half is gonna be below the fold. So it might be a little easier if you start by just drawing half of the circle first on the top. You could start, yeah, right about there. Draw a big upside down U shape. Yeah, and that's okay if our circles look a little different, right? Yeah. And we're gonna draw the bottom circle or the bottom half of the circle coming down here and connecting over to the other side also. Good job, buddy. Big. That's okay. There's a little more up here than there is down at the bottom. What's the most important thing? To have food. And to? Practice. Practice. Yeah, we could do this whole lesson over again. And the next time, I promise, it'll turn out even better than the first time. All right, should we keep going? Yeah. Let's draw another circle, a smaller circle, 
right here. Now half is going to be on the top and then the other half is going to be below the fold. Good job. Oh, you're doing such a good job, man. Now I'm going to draw another circle that just goes barely. It goes right next to the one that we just drew. Right next to it all the way around. Now I'm going to turn my paper a little this way so it makes it easier. And I'm going to draw a line that's above the fold and below the fold. There you go. And then we can do the same thing on the right side. Above the fold and just barely below the fold. All right, now let's color in. We're going to color in in between these two lines and also in between our two circles. Now you already kind of okay. colored in your side lines. That's okay. Now we're going to fast forward this part, but you guys can pause the video and take time to color in those parts also. We finished drawing our Pokeball, Austin. Now we're ready to open up our drawing. We're going to have half of it up here at the top and half down here at the bottom. Yeah, go ahead and flatten out those folds. That'll make it a little easier to draw on. The next part we're going to do is draw our Pokemon. Now we want to make sure that we're drawing everything below the top fold and above the bottom fold. That way, when we fold it back up, it's going to be inside. Is that cool? Yeah. Now, which Pokemon are we going to draw again? Pikachu. Yeah, Pikachu. Let's first draw. We're going to keep this really simple. We're, let's first draw his uh, head. We're just going to draw half of them sticking up. <laughs> so we're going to draw an upside down U shape. I'm going to draw it like this. We're going to come up, around, and back down. <laughs> Good. Then let's draw his ears. I'm going to draw a curve that comes out to the side like this. There you go. You could actually draw bigger. Pikachu has kind of long bunny ears. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then we're going to draw a curve that comes back and connects to his head. And we'll leave a little space in between where we started. Yeah. Let's do, let's repeat that same step over here. I'm going to draw the same curve line coming off to the side and then coming back to his head. Next on his ears, we're going to draw a curve, comes down, and we're going to draw that same curve over here on this side. Next, let's color in these two shapes. What should we draw next? His eyes. Okay, let's draw a circle over here on the left and a circle over here on the right. There you go. Another circle. Then we're going to draw a smaller circle in the top left of each eye. And then let's color in the big circle, but leave the little circles white. Remember to pause the video if you need extra time. Now what should we draw? His mouth. His mouth. Let's draw a curved W in between his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to draw him really happy. I'm going to draw a big <laughs> U shape that comes down. He's really excited to jump out of the Pokeball. <laughs> <laughs> He's ready to attack. And then we're going to draw his tongue inside. Now what are we missing? His cheeks. Okay, let's draw a half circle. On the left, I'm going to draw a C-shape, backward C-shape, and a frontward C-shape over here. Okay, now let's draw his arms because he really is excited yeah. to jump out of the Pokeball. <laughs> we're going to draw an upside down U. We're going to start here on the side of his body, come up, and then we're going to come back down. Yeah, then let's do the same thing over here on the right. And we want to make sure that we don't go below this bottom fold. All right, we did it. We finished drawing our Pokeball folding surprise, except we're still not done. What do we still need to do? Color it. Yeah, we need to color it. Color it. <laughs> this is my favorite part. Now we are going to fast forward one more time, but remember at the end, you can pause the video again to match the same color. You ready to fast forward? Yeah. Awesome, we did it. We finished coloring our Pokeball. Now we added this white little circle up at the top. What is that called? Highlight. Yeah, it's a highlight, and that makes our Pokeball look shiny. I also added this dark part over here, or shading. That makes my Pokeball look 3D. 
more 3D. Yeah, but you could leave that off to keep the lesson a little easier. Now we also need to show our friends what's inside, although they know it's Pikachu, right? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, on the count of three, let's do it. Three, three two, two, one, Pikachu! Pikachu. <laughs> now we added this extra little detail over here. We added his tail. You can leave that off, but I think our art friends should add even more things to their drawing. What could they add? Like a different Pokemon. Oh, that would be awesome. You could draw a different Pokemon. You want to make sure that you draw it below this top fold and above this bottom fold. That way it's hidden when you fold it back up. Did you have fun? Yeah. You promise? Yeah. And we hope you had a lot of fun too. Yeah, we do. We hope you had a lot of fun. Remember, it's okay if your drawings look different than ours because the most important thing is to have fun and to practice. Practice. We'll see you guys later. We love you. Oh. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Pikachu. Pikachu. <laughs> Hey art friends, today we're going to draw another Pokemon from Sword and Shield. Which one are we going to draw this time? Score Bunny. Score Bunny. And how come you like this one so much? Because I picked it for my starter Pokemon. Yeah, what what kind of, what type Pokemon is he? Fire. Fire. And he looks like a bunny, right? Mm -hmm. We hope you're going to follow along with this. You need something to draw with. We're going to use markers. You also need some... Paper and something to color with. Yeah, alright. Let's start. Okay. We're first going to draw our Score Bunny's nose right here in the middle of our paper, but towards the top so that we have room for his body. We're going to draw the letter, or sorry, yeah, the letter V. <laughs> <laughs> That's for his nose. Then we're going to draw the top of his nose. We'll connect the top. Then we're going to draw the little band-aid. I, I don't know if it's a band-aid. <laughs> it looks like a little patch on his nose. We're going to extend the line or the top of his nose past on both sides. And we're going to turn this into a rectangle. So let's draw the left side and also the right side. And we want these lines to be the same length on each side, but shorter than this bottom line. Then we're going to connect the top. We're going to start over here, draw a curve to connect over to the other side. Now we can draw his eyes. We'll draw a rectangle, rectangle, an <laughs> oval over here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting my shapes mixed up. <laughs> You don't know your um, shapes. Yeah. <laughs> now we're going to draw another oval over here on the right side. And we want to draw it the same size as the left. Cool. Now let's draw a small circle in the top of each of those ovals. This is for the highlight. Make his eyes look shiny. Now let's draw his mouth. We're going to draw a curve. He kind of looks like he's frowning, but we're going to draw it, his mouth open. And he's going to look like he's yelling. Then we're going to draw a U-shape underneath, big U-shape to connect left side over to the right. Then we can draw his teeth. Let's draw a U-shape in the middle. He just has one tooth. Yeah, one big tooth. Yeah. And then we're going to draw the tongue down here. We're going to draw another curve at the bottom. Cool. Now let's draw a little line that connects the nose down to the mouth. Kind of looks like him already, huh? Yeah. Now we're ready to draw his head. Let's draw a big U shape that's going to start over here underneath his eye. It's going to come under his mouth and then back over here next to his other eye. Good. And then back up. Then we're going to draw the little fur or his hair that's sticking out on each of his cheeks. We're going to draw a curve that comes out and up. Let's do that same curve on the other side. Out and up. Ooh, that one I made bigger. <laughs> That's okay. Then we're going to draw another curve that comes back. Looks like it's ear. It does. <laughs> we're going to draw bigger ears, though. We're going to draw another smaller curve that comes up and back down. Then let's repeat all of those same steps over here. We're going to draw another curve that comes in. Then we'll draw a small curve coming up and back down. Cool. Now let's draw a curve that goes over the top of his head to complete the shape of his head. We're going to just connect it all the way over to the other side. All right, now hopefully we still have enough room up here for his big ears. We're first going to draw the left ear. We're going to start in the middle of his head and we're going to draw a big curve that comes over to the left. And then we're going to draw another curve that comes back down 
and almost connects to where we started. Good. Okay, now let's draw his other ear. We're gonna draw a curve. Comes out of the first one. Wow, getting really close to the top of our paper. Yeah. <laughs> then we're gonna curve back down. And I'm not gonna go all the way yet. We're gonna draw a little piece of fur sticking out to the side and then connect down. Yes. Now let's draw the inside of his ear. We're gonna start right here. We could draw a point down here at the bottom and also a point up here at the top. So one right there and then another one right about there. Then we can draw, let's draw a curve that connects these two points, one on each side. Now let's draw another one on this side. I'm gonna draw two more points. Yeah. And then we'll connect those two points with two curves. Next, we're ready to draw his body. He has a little collar around his neck though. So let's first draw two short lines that come out of his chin. Then we're gonna draw a U shape that comes in towards the middle and then connects back to his chin. Sideways U, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side, Side, sideways U. Yeah. We're gonna draw him sitting down. So let's draw his arms in front of his body. We're gonna draw two curves, one over here and one on this side. Now we can draw his hand. We're gonna draw a curve that comes down, around, and then back up. Almost looks like you're drawing a raindrop shape. Yeah. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, around and back up. Next, we're gonna draw his fingers. We'll add two little curves on, his, on each hand. Then right in between his hands, let's draw the bottom of his body. Little curve to connect. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. Yours is bigger, and our two drawings do look a little different, but that's okay because both of them look awesome. I especially love yours because the most important thing is... To have fun. Have fun and to... Practice. Practice. Remember to practice. And it's okay if your drawings even look different than both of ours. All right, let's keep going. Okay. Now we're ready to draw his feet. Let's start over here, and we're going to draw a curve. We're going to leave a little space next to his hand, his arm. We're gonna draw a curve that comes up really high because he has big feet, better to jump with. Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna draw another curve on the other side that matches. We're gonna go up to the same height. Then we're gonna curve around. Look at this, the top of his foot is big. So we're gonna draw a big upside down U. Then we're gonna come closer down at the bottom Yes, and then we'll connect the bottom with another U shape. Now let's do the same thing over here on the right side. Draw a big upside down U for the top of his foot, come closer, and then connect the bottom with a small U. <laughs> then we can draw his legs, two curves that connect his foot to his hand. And the same thing on the right side, two little curves. Okay, now let's give him toes. We draw two curves, just like we did for his hands, on the top of his foot. Now he has a little patch on the bottom of each foot, just like he does on his nose. He has a lot of Band-Aids. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think they're Band-Aids, but I'm gonna draw a curve on the bottom of his foot, and then a smaller one down here, the, uh, closer to his heel. There we go, and then we're gonna connect the edge of those and then I'm gonna repeat that same step on the left side. Long curve at the top, short one at the bottom and then connect the side. Awesome, we did it, we finished drawing Score Bunny except he's gonna look cooler once we do what? Color it. Yeah, we still need to color him. This part we're gonna fast forward but at the end you guys can pause the video to match the same coloring. You ready to fast forward? Yeah. Austin, give me five. You did such a great job on coloring Score Bunny. Did you have fun? Yeah. Now, most of them is white, but we used markers to color in all of the details. We also used a gray marker to add shading to his ears, underneath his chin, and also on the bottom of his body. 
I added shadows to his feet too. We hope you had a lot of fun drawing your square bunny. Yeah, we do. We hope you had a lot of fun. And remember, it's okay if your drawings look different than ours. You can even add more details to the background. Maybe there's even a trainer in the background. Yeah. With a Pokeball. Yeah. We'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, our friends, to celebrate Easter, we decided to draw. An empty tomb. Yeah, we hope you're going to follow along with us. You need something to draw with. We're going to use markers. You also need some? Paper and something to color with. Yeah. All right, let's start. Okay. Let's first draw the rock that's in front, that was in front of the tomb. Let's draw a circle, but I'm going to draw a bumpy circle. I'm going to draw... Uh, not like a perfect circle. We're gonna draw bumpy like this and then come around to the top and then connect. There you go. And kind of draw it big. Yeah, keep going. You're doing great. Good job. All right, now let's add thickness to the rock. We're gonna draw another uh, curve right next to it. Looks like a backward C. We're gonna come out and then we're going to, down at the bottom, we're going to connect back in. Nice job. All right, now on, on this rock, let's add texture. I'm going to add little rocks or little, maybe these are um, dents in the rock. You can just draw a bunch of them all over. It doesn't have to be in the same spot. Yeah, now let's draw the actual tomb or the opening to the tomb. We're going to draw a bumpy line that comes out to the left. Then we're going to draw a bumpy line coming down. All right, now I'm going to draw this coming down almost to the same level as the stone over here. You went a little further and that's okay. Now next to this, let's draw an olive tree. We're going to draw a wiggly line. We're going to start down here and I'm going to draw a wiggly line that comes up the side like this. And then right up here at the top, we're going to stop. So half of the tree is going to be off of the paper. Now let's draw a few of the branches coming out from the tree. I'm going to draw one right here. It's going to be right above the opening. I'm going to come out like this and we'll come across. Maybe stop right over the top of the opening. Cool. Then let's draw another line coming back and we're going to draw a point at the, at the end and get thicker towards the tree. Yeah. Now we can also draw the leaves. I'm going to draw round leaves or oval shaped leaves that come out from the branch. And I'm just going to repeat that same step all the way to the end of that branch. Then let's draw leaves on the top part of the branch too. It also looks a little bit like a palm leaf, but that's okay. Let's keep going. Now, when we go too fast, remember you guys at home can always pause the video. Now, let's also draw another branch up here a little higher. So, yeah, you can extend your tree up higher. And then I'm going to draw a wiggly line that comes out like this. And I'm going to come out maybe even further. I really like drawings that fill up our whole paper. Yeah. Okay, let's do the same thing. Let's start out here, draw a little point, and then follow that line all the way back to the tree. Let's add a few more branches coming out from this one. I'm going to draw one right about here. And you guys at home can draw them anywhere. Really, you don't have to match the same exact place where we're drawing ours. I'm going to also draw maybe another one coming out the top, shorter one. You're doing an awesome job, Austin. How old are you? Eight. You're eight. And that's okay that your drawing looks different than mine because the most important thing is... To have fun. Yeah, to have fun and to... Practice. Practice. All right, let's keep going. Let's add those same leaves to this branch. Now we can add them everywhere. I'm going to draw them on this top branch. And then I'm also going to come down on the bottom side of that branch and draw more leaves. And I'll draw them on the next branch over. And remember to pause the video and you can take time to add more leaves to your tree, to your olive tree. Good job, Ost. Now let's draw the rest of the tomb. So we'll start over here on the tree and we're going to draw a bumpy line for the top of the tomb and we're going to use overlapping. So we're going behind this branch 
I'm going to imagine it going behind and in between the leaves and we can even go behind this other branch and we're just going to come over to the right side of our paper. Yeah, isn't that cool? It makes yeah. it look more 3D. Now let's draw another, we'll draw another hill in the background over here. So we're going to come up out of this diagonal bumpy line and then we're going to come back down and connect to the tree. Now back here, let's add three crosses. We're going to draw a line straight down. This one's going to be the tallest one in the middle. And then we'll draw a shorter line up at the top. And then let's draw another cross right next to it that's shorter. And we'll draw another one on the right side. So one on the left and one on the right. Good. Now let's come down here and add more details to the inside of the tomb. Let's draw the table or the bed that he was laid on. Jesus was laid on. We'll draw a line coming out of the stone. We'll draw a short line down and then we'll draw another line coming back to the stone. Okay now let's draw another line coming down from that. This is the table and then we'll draw a line coming back into the rock. Okay now let's let's draw the bottom of our tomb. So let's draw another bumpy line coming into the tree and then we want to make it look 3D. So let's draw another line that connects the opening to the bed. This is the back of the, yes, back of the tomb. Then also let's come over here and this line down here, let's draw another bumpy line connecting the rock to the side of our paper. Let's also add a few little rocks down here at the bottom on the floor. We can draw some over by the tree. All right, Austin, we did it. We finished our drawing of the empty tomb and it looks amazing, except we still need to do one more thing. What is it? Color it. Yeah, we need to color our drawings. I hope our art friends are gonna take time to color their drawings also. Now this part we are gonna fast forward, but at the end you can pause the video if you wanna match the same coloring. You ready to fast forward? Yeah. coloring our drawing of the empty tomb. It looks beautiful, just like this. Now we colored the whole entire thing. I hope our art friends are gonna pause the video right now to match the same coloring. We used markers to color our drawings, but you could use whatever you have at home. We hope you had fun drawing with us. Yeah, we do. We hope you had a lot of fun, and we also wanna wish you a happy Easter for this entire week. We love you guys, and we'll see you later, art friends. Goodbye! Goodbye. Hey, our friends, Sarah and Jock, Coral Reef. Yeah, this is where there's a lot of life underwater. There's lots of rocks and coral and fish. We hope you're gonna follow along with us. You need something to draw with. Marker. <laughs> and some paper. And some. Color with. Something to color with. All right. You ready to start? Yeah. Okay. We're first gonna draw the rocks for a coral reef. We're gonna start down here and we're gonna draw a bumpy line and actually turn it into an upside down U shape. And it doesn't have to look exactly like mine. You can make your rock taller or wider. You could add more bumps or even less bumps. Now let's connect the bottom and draw another wiggly line. Let's also draw, maybe it, there's a little rock behind this one. So we can draw a little one coming out. We're using overlapping. So we're only drawing part of it because it's behind the bigger rock. Okay, let's draw another big rock over here. Maybe, uh, let's see, this one could be maybe a little lower like this. And then we'll draw the same kind of thing coming down like that, a U shape. We could even draw a smaller one in front of this one. Let's draw it a little lower also. I'm gonna draw another bumpy line like this. It's smaller in front and it's lower. So the side lines right here, the side of the rock is lower than this one. You see that? So we could draw it a little lower on both sides. There you go. Now let's connect this one, the bottom. And then we're gonna connect the bottom of the bigger rock that's behind it so we're only gonna draw it connecting to the rock. We're gonna imagine that going behind and then coming over here and connecting to the other side. 
Yeah. Now let's add an even bigger rock behind the whole thing. We're gonna start over here. And this one, I'm gonna draw a big bumpy line that comes up. And maybe we'll stop there. Start here. Yeah. Bump. And then let's come down like that. And we can add another one over here coming out. And then uh, what should we do? Should we, let's just go all the way down like this and come down to about the same length that we came down over here on this side. So that can come down to match. Now let's connect into the rock that's in front. And let's also connect in over here. Now we're gonna imagine these lines going behind the two rocks and come out like this and then connect to this one. We got all these cool rocks now, but we're missing something. The coral. Yeah, the coral that makes it a coral reef. And also all of the other alive stuff that lives in a coral reef. Yeah. Okay, let's first draw some seaweed. We'll start over here and let's draw a wiggly line that comes up like that. Got a lot of wiggly lines. Then at the top, we're gonna draw another wiggly line, but watch this, we're gonna match the first one we drew. Perfect. Then we're gonna draw another one, but this one's gonna overlap too. Let's draw a little curve for the top of our seaweed. This one's gonna be shorter. And then we're gonna continue it down. And some of these wiggles could be different if you want. Let's add another one on the other side, but let's make it even shorter. We'll draw the top and then draw the wigglies coming down. Let's add more seaweed over here on the right side. We're gonna repeat the same steps. I'm gonna draw a wiggly line going up, or you could draw it going down too, that works. Then let's draw the top of our seaweed and then draw a wiggle line that matches. Well, mine's a little different, that's okay. Now let's draw one on the left side. I'm just gonna draw all the way down and maybe another one over here on the right side. Ooh, this one's gonna be really long, come down even further. Now it's starting to look like a coral reef. Next, let's add some coral. We're gonna draw two lines coming up out of the rock. Then we're gonna draw a wiggly line coming out on the left and also over here on the right. Coral is really fun to draw because it, you want to make it look natural, so it's okay if it looks a lot different than mine. Now we're going to draw a little curve at the end, like that, and come back. We could do the same thing over here on the right side. Let's draw another little wiggly or a little U shape that comes out. I'm going to draw a couple on the right side. Now we're going to come back down and almost like we're going to connect it looks like arms coming out of a person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now we're gonna draw the center part coming up further. So I'm gonna draw two curves going the other direction. No, it doesn't. Now, yeah, well, that could be the neck. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now let's add more branches of our coral coming off. Now watch me, I'm just gonna add little wiggles that come out like this and then back in. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna go fast because yours doesn't have to look like mine. It can look completely different. Then I'm gonna draw in between these, I'm gonna draw two little bumps to connect. There we go, we drew our coral. Oh, look, it's different, I like it. Go ahead and just do whatever you want. <laughs> oh yeah, just like that. That's, that's awesome, I really like that, Austin. Now it's okay that our two drawings are different, especially yeah. because this is the ocean and everything looks different. Because the most important thing is... To have fun. And to... Practice. Practice. All right, let's keep drawing. Let's add more coral. Let's add another one right here. I'm gonna... You can watch me first. I'm gonna draw just a couple little things like this. What? You could just draw wiggles. All kinds of shapes. Look at that. I wanna see how you do it. Now you guys at home, I drew that really fast. You can pause the video right now and take time to add your own coral. Look at that, you did it. Now let's fast forward even more and let's add more of these shapes in different places on our drawing. Now we have a bunch of coral. We also added more seaweed. But we need to add sea anemone. 
Anemones. An Anemones, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a tricky word to say. Yes. All right, let's add those. We're going to draw two wiggle lines. Let's add a big one right here. I'm going to add a wiggle like that and a one that matches, but look, there's a lot of space in between. Now we're going to draw a wiggle up here. I went out like this, and then I'm going to draw another wiggle that comes across to the other side. See how it's got little U shapes on the side? Yeah. Do you know what a sea anemone is? No. It, it kind of looks like a plant, but I think it's more considered uh, like an animal. And they actually eat things like crabs. <laughs> That's gross. Yeah. They're predators. Okay, now let's draw the little cool tentacles coming out. I'm going to draw a bunch. Watch this. I'm going to draw little U shapes that come out and back in. So upside down U shapes, and I'm going to go all the way across to the other side. This is kind of gross looking, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm going to draw another one. Let's use even more overlapping. This one I'm going to draw smaller, and I'm going to draw it next to the first one we drew. And I'm only drawing one because the other side is behind this one. Yeah, then let's draw that little sideways U shape and then a wiggle line that connects to the other side or to the first one. Next, let's add those little tentacles up at the top. We're going to draw upside down U's right next to each other and go all the way across. Maybe this one's behind this coral also. See how my little tentacles go behind? <laughs> and I like that you have more space so you don't have to overlap. Let's fast forward and add even more of these cool creatures. I like all of the cool sea anemones you added. Now, let's add one more type of plant. We're going to add a sponge tube coral plant, which is really cool. We're going to draw a, an oval first. This is for the top. It looks like a tube coming out of the ground. We'll draw a squished circle. Then we're going to draw, we're going to draw a bumpy line that comes down. We're going to draw it coming down to the bottom of this rock. Now I left a little space next to the oval. Then we're going to leave that same space over here and draw another little bumpy line all the way down. Now we're going to connect these two lines with a curve that comes around the top that matches the oval. Yeah, look at that. That is weird looking, huh? Yeah. Let's draw another one. Let's draw one over here. I'm going to draw another oval, and I'm going to go a little faster because I'm just repeating the same steps. I'm going to draw two bumpy lines, come around, and then connect the top. Let's do more overlapping. I'm going to draw another one that's higher, like this. Maybe it's even bigger. And then this time, the bumpy line is just going to be really short and connect to the top, yours could come down, yeah, right there, it's a little longer. And then we could do the same on the right side. And connect the top. See how that one looks like it's behind the other two. Yeah. Let's draw another one over here. And maybe this one is going more diagonal. And then connect the top. Now you guys at home could add even more of these cool little tubes all over your drawing. I did a little curve down at the bottom to make it look more 3D, but you can leave that off. All right, Austin, we did it. We finished drawing our coral reef. It looks really cool, except it's gonna look even better once it's- Colored. Yeah, colored, because coral reefs are beautiful. They have all kinds of cool colors. Now, at the end, you guys can pause the video to match our same coloring, or you could color your drawings any way you want. You ready to fast forward? Yeah. So we did it. That was a lot of coloring. Was that fun? Yeah. I hope our art friends are going to take time to color their drawings also. Now we added other creatures to our coral reef too. Yeah. Like tropical fish. What's this thing? Eel. An eel and... Starfish. Yeah, starfish down at the bottom. We also added a giant clam back in that little area. It kind of looks like you could swim back there and see if there's a pearl in the clam. Yeah. We hope you have a lot of fun drawing the coral reef. Yeah, we do. We hope you had a lot of fun, and we also hope that you take time to add even more creatures. 
you could ask your parents for help to find out what lives in the coral reef and then even use the pictures as inspiration to draw more creatures. Like snakes. Oh yeah, sea snake. Mm -hmm. That would be way cool. We also use markers to color our drawings, but you can use whatever you have at home. And we'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye! Goodbye. Wait, check out my last bonus video. Goodbye! Hey, our friends here are going to draw a guitar player. Yeah, we're going to draw a mariachi guitar player. We hope you're going to follow along with us. You need something to draw with, some paper, and... Something to color with. Yeah, at the very end. All right, you ready to start? Yeah. Let's first draw his face. Right, right here in the middle of our paper, I'm going to draw a line. We're going to draw him singing, too. So right, right about here. Then we're going to draw... Oh, yeah, you could draw a little wider. There you go. And then we're going to draw a U shape underneath. Yeah, and then we can draw teeth at the top, a line across the top, and also make a line across the bottom for his bottom teeth. And we could also draw his tongue inside. Next, we could draw his nose. I'm going to draw a uh, oval right here. And we could also draw his eyes. I'm going to draw them closed because he's, he's really singing loud. There you go, little curves. Yeah, we could also give him a mustache. I'm gonna draw a curve that comes down. And then we're gonna come back up to the middle of his nose. And then let's do the same thing on the other side. Curve down and then back up to the middle of his nose. All right, now let's color in his mustache. Now let's draw the shape of his head. We'll start here on the left side of his eye. We're going to come down like this, and then we're going to come back up on the other side. Big letter U. And then let's draw an upside down U to connect the top of his head. Okay, now let's draw his ears. I'm going to draw the letter C and a backward C. Now let's draw his sombrero. We're going to start here on the side right below his ear and we're going to draw a curve that comes up on the left and then we'll do the same thing over here on the right. Now let's connect these two lines for the rest of the sombrero. We're going to go over, come back down and connect. You did a huge one. Yeah, I love it. It's awesome. They're really big hats, so that's perfect. Now let's draw that same line going across the top. So I'm going to start here on this side, but watch, we're going to come out of this the outside shape, and then we're going to get further away towards the middle. And then on this side, I'm going to come back down and then connect back in. So it gets really thin on the edges or at the end. There you go. <laughs> Good job. All right, now we can draw the pattern in between these two lines. Let's add a cool design. I'm going to draw a zigzag line that goes all the way across. Now this part we're going to speed up, but if you guys need extra time, you can pause the video. Let's also give him eyebrows. I'm going to draw a line that goes over his left eye, and then let's make it thicker. We're going to draw another curve that goes over, across, and then back down. And let's do the same thing on this side. Line that goes over, yeah, just like that. And then let's draw another line that goes over and makes his eyebrow thicker. All right, now we're ready to draw his guitar. Let's draw a circle right below his chin. So we're going to draw a circle about this size. Then we're going to draw two lines coming out to the side. We're going to start at the top of that circle, come out to the right. Then let's draw another line that matches that starts at the bottom of that circle and comes out. Good. Then we can connect the end. And let's also draw the end of our guitar. We're going to draw two lines that come out, one on the top and the bottom. And they're, they look more diagonal instead of parallel. Okay, and then we can connect those two lines together. Then we're going to draw a line that starts right here next to the circle. And we're going to curve up and then to the left. And then we're going to do another one that curves down and also to the left. You can do the curve up at the top and then a curve down at the bottom. Okay, now let's draw the rest. 
I'm gonna come across like this, down, and then back in. I love how big your guitar is. <laughs> it looks so cool. Now let's draw a rectangle shape just to the left of the circle. So I'm gonna draw a line first. You can draw it, right? I'll give you two points, right? Here. Yeah. And then let's draw two short lines coming out to the left and then connect those two short lines. Now we have his head and also his guitar, but his guitar looks like it's floating. Yeah. Let's, let's draw his body next. We're gonna draw two lines coming down from his chin and connecting to his body. Then we're gonna draw his legs down here. We're gonna draw, we're gonna imagine them going, so this line going behind the guitar, coming out and coming down further for his leg. Yeah, let's do the same thing for this line. We're gonna imagine it coming through the guitar or behind the guitar and coming down. I'm gonna do the same over here, draw my other leg. Now let's draw the inside of his leg. We're gonna draw two points. We're gonna leave a little space. Yes, that's for his ankles. Now we're gonna come up and then back down for the inside of his legs. Okay, now let's draw his ankles or the bottom of his pants. And we could draw his shoes. I'm gonna draw a curve that comes out on the left. And then we're gonna curve back up and connect to the inside. Yes, and then we'll do the same on the right. Curve out and then back in. What are we missing, Oz? His arms. His arms, yeah. Let's draw one arm coming out to the side. Maybe you just finished doing a big, huge note on the guitar. We're gonna come out to the side and then we're gonna draw another line coming out below it for the other side of his arm. And we'll draw a line connecting. Let's draw another line for his white shirt underneath his jacket. Next, let's draw his hand. We'll first draw his thumb. Let's draw a small upside down U in the top of his arm. And then we're gonna draw a big sideways U shape or a C, the letter C. Then let's add two lines for his fingers. One, two. <laughs> okay, now let's draw his other arm. We're gonna draw it hanging onto his guitar. So first we're gonna come down and connect to the side. Then we're right here, we're gonna draw the letter V. We'll go down and then back up. And then let's draw an upside down U for his hand hanging onto his guitar. Yeah, and then we can draw two lines for the fingers on his hand. We still need to add one more important thing to our guitar. What is it missing? The strings. Yeah, we need to add the strings. Let's start here and we'll draw, we're gonna draw a couple lines. I'm just gonna, let's just draw them all the way to the end. And I'm just gonna add three to keep it simple, but there's more than three strings on the guitar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can draw them all the way to the end if you want. Okay, and then we're gonna imagine those three lines coming through and connecting all the way to the rectangle shape. Yeah, and I'm gonna do another one, right down the middle, and then the last one. Now, if you want, you could add more strings, but let's leave it just like that. We still need to do one more thing to our drawing. My favorite part, what is it? Color it. Yeah, this part we're gonna fast forward, but at the end, you can pause the video to match the same color. You ready to fast forward? Yeah. Austin, you did it. You finished coloring your mariachi player. He looks so awesome. And he looks like he's really getting into his music. Yeah. He's an awesome guitar player. Now you can pause the video right now to match the same coloring. You could also color your drawings any way you want. You could add more decorations on his guitar. Leave more people back here. Yeah, you could draw more people in the band, in the mariachi band. You could draw a trumpet player or even a violin player. Yeah. We hope you have a lot of fun drawing your mariachi player. Yeah, you said it. Good job. <laughs> yeah, mariachi is kind of challenging to say, huh? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we hope you had a lot of fun, and we'll see you later, our friends. Goodbye. Goodbye.